Hello AP U.S. History students. This is Mr. Goyette with National University Virtual High School reviewing for you uh, some information you'll need to review for Unit 5 uh, to prepare for the quizzes, exams, and of course the final we'll be taking this week as well for the course. I'm going to review some information for the 1920s, the Roaring Twenties, uh, everything from the flappers to um, consumer-oriented society, the American family, uh, Harding and Coolidge's presidencies. So let's begin with consumer-oriented society of the 1920s. You can follow along with me on page 722 for this information. In the 1920s, consumer-oriented the consumer-oriented economy emphasized um, advertising, chain stores, and installment uh, installment plans. Uh, they all became critical ways of keeping consumers coming back. Uh, there was an increased marketing and purchasing. Uh, all of these things um, ch uh, really created the consumer-oriented economy economy of the 1920s. The American family in the 1920s experienced declining birth rates. You can review this information on page 725. Um, during his presidency, Warren G. Harding, um, the dark horse contender who, who won the election, uh, the unexpected candidate, um, he lacked the capacity to govern very effectively and he delegated a lot of his power. So he brought on um, some good team members into his cabinet, but he also brought on some um, members who proved to be uh, scandalous members of his um, presidential cabinet. Harry Doherty and Albert Fall were involved in the Teapot, Teapot Dome scandal, uh, which occurred in Elk Hills, California, and Teapot Dome, Wyoming. Uh, Harding died of a heart attack. Uh, before the verdict on Albert Fall actually went through, but his Harding's popularity and his reputation were very negatively affected um, because he allowed some of his friends to abuse their power while he was in office. So during his presidency, Warren G. Harding allowed some of his friends to abuse their power. The end of the Red Scare came about as a result of its own extremism as well as the actions of a few courageous public officials. Basically, um, Attorney General Mitchell Palmer uh, falsely predicted uh, a May Day revolution in 1920 that discredited the Red Scare. Uh, he was, uh, Palmer was rounding up uh, 350, 600, 1,000 people at a time uh, and sending groups back on what he called the, what, what the press called the Soviet Ark. Um, Palmer was a Quaker and a progressive who turned uh, away from his liberal background and became a very uh, conservative and um, um, jingoistic uh, leader. He would he rounded up foreign-born radicals and sent them back. This was the fear of Bolshevism because of the um, uh, Soviet Revolution or the uh, Bolshevik Revolution in the Soviet Union. Um, there were labor was labor unrest at the time, and the whole attitude of SOS, ship them out or shoot them, became uh, ship or shoot became the mantra for people who wanted to get rid of extremists or radicals in the United States because of the fear of the Red Scare. But the Red Scare itself um, fell apart because of its own extremism and because of the well the actions of a few courageous public officials. The National Origins Act of, of 1924, that's on page 737. You can read that information there. Uh, it was an attempt by some to establish racial purity as an immigration policy. The quota system was intended to reduce immigration from Southern and Eastern Europe, increase immigration from Northern and Western Europe, and ban immigration from Asia. The Scopes trial, or the Scopes monkey trial as it was called, um, indicated that traditional rural religious beliefs were stronger than ever, and certainly stronger than many in uh, the mainstream media had, had imagined. On page uh, 746, you can review some of this information. Basically, traditional rural religious beliefs r remained strong in the 1920s, and the aggressive fundamentalist sects grew rapidly during this time. President 
Cal Calvin Coolidge, the man who liked to take a lot of naps and spent about maybe six hours of the day working and spent the rest of it sleeping, uh, was a re Republican president who was friendly to American business. He once commented that the business of America is to do business, or something along those lines. The business of America is business. And you can review this information on page 738. The Democratic Party of the 1920s, um, review page bottom, the bottom of page 740, gained uh, new young voters among the city's ethnic groups. So the Democrats started to gain um, voting uh, voting blocks that were normally um, would normally go to Republicans, especially from, uh, among immigrant groups. Republican policies in the 1920s favored high tariffs, low taxes, and cuts in government spending. You can review this information on page 739. In the 1920s, American agricultural lobbies succeeded in passing higher tariffs for some crops, and this is on page 739 as well. Herbert Hoover's solution to the Depression was uh, pro to provide some federal help for farmers and bankers and leave relief for um, the poor to private charities and voluntary organizations. You can review this on page 754. You'll want to come back to this page for some of your essay questions where you're asked to compare and contrast contrast FDR's policies and Hoover's policies. Hoover asked Congress for the Federal Farm Board and the Reconstruction Finance Corporation to loan federal funds to farmers, bankers, and businessmen. Again, page 754. Um, the purpose of agric the Agricultural Adjustment Act was to raise farm income by restricting production. Um, you'll hear that a lot of farmers uh, not only killed off their crops or, or stopped growing crops altogether during this time in a, in a panic to try to bring prices back up, but they also killed a lot of their livestock um, because there was uh, this acknowledgement that prices, uh, because of the glut or the enormous amount of product on the market, it was driving down prices. You can review this information on page 758. The significance of the Works Progress Administration, or the WPA, was that it um, it funded a variety of projects. And this is that whole idea that a lot of people were depressed, scared, or fearful about the Great Depression, didn't know, know what was uh, to what was in store for the American economy, for the American country in general, and a lot there was a lot of fear there. And when you think and worry and become sedentary on the couch, you don't end up doing much. So the idea of the WPA was to get people to work, and it funded a variety of projects, including including theater, writing in the art, writing and arts, as well as buildings and parks. Um, so this is you can review this on page 759. The WPA. The WPA intended to put people to work so they could maintain their skills. Um, Harry Hopkins, a social worker, was in charge of this project, and he survived, as the note, as the textbook comments, almost entirely, as it seemed, on black coffee and cigarettes. Uh, it's quite the quite the uh, smoker. The New Deal handled past inequities or inequalities, excuse me, to minorities by. Um, well, it it, uh, it it really the New Deal, uh, as far as dealing with discrimination directly, didn't do a very good jo job of that. It didn't hand out cash loans or confront squarely racial injustice. It didn't uh, make sure that all programs were colorblind. There were all sorts of holes in the New Deal that left people out. And your textbook talks about this on page 767. Basically, all minorities were discriminated against by the New Deal. There were some attempts, but in terms of a direct approach to stopping racism or racial injustice, it wasn't handled by the New Deal. That would come later. Which of the following is an accurate evaluation of the New Deal? Uh, you can look over this on page 775. So what is the accurate version of the New Deal? It was a moderate to relatively ineffective economic. It was relatively ineffective economically, but it did produce sweeping political changes, putting the Democratic Party in the majority. I'm going to stop here. I'll be right back.